Hello, I'm Michael O'Connell, and in today's video, we are going to be performing a von Neumann stability analysis on the Crank Nicholson method we used in the previous video to obtain a temperature profile of a bar that we were heating up. What we saw in the previous video is that for any value of u, the solution we obtained was stable, where u is a combination of three different constants, the thermal diffusivity, the time increment, and the position increment, which are used to approximate the partial derivatives that appeared in the heat diffusion equation, which was the basis for this problem. And we also use the solution to that partial differential equation to obtain these equations here, which we used in part three of this video series, where we performed a von Neumann stability analysis on the explicit differencing method. So if you need a refresher on how we got these equations, you may want to watch that video real quick before you watch this one. Now, in the von Neumann stability analysis that we want to perform, we want to look at a relationship between the temperature at some position j at the subsequent time n plus 1 and the temperature at the same position j at the previous time n, where these two temperatures are related by some factor, let's say omega. And what we want to show is that omega is less than or equal to 1 for any value of u that we choose. And what that will demonstrate is that the Crank-Nicholson method, which is an implicit differencing method that we used to obtain the temperature profile of a bar that we were heating up, that solution is stable because this is always less than or equal to one. And what that means is that when we compute that next temperature at the subsequent time n plus one, it doesn't shoot off to positive or negative infinity in which that would ruin our solution and be obviously an unstable one. So this is what we are going to show using the von Neumann stability analysis on the Crank-Nicholson method. Now we're going to use the equations we have over here to find the relationship between T sub J comma N plus 1 and T sub J comma N. This means that we want to get the left hand side in terms of this term and then the right hand side in terms of this term. So let's do that. If we do that, this will be factored out on the left hand side and this will be factored out on the right hand side. So that's the way I'm going to write this. Okay, and we have equations that have other relationships we're going to need. So we have t sub j comma n plus 1. Okay, now how would this relate to the position increment that is one step to the right? Okay, how would that relate? Well, it relates by this factor, e to the ik delta x. So we have that term here at the position step j plus 1. So we have minus u e ik delta x. Now, this is at the position j, so we just have the 1 plus 2u there. And then we have one position increment to the left of j. So that is related by this factor here. So we have the minus u still, and then e negative ik delta x. And hopefully you see that we're going to get something very, very similar on the right-hand side. So I'm going to write that on the board down here very quick. We obtained this equation using Euler's formula, and we are going to use it again, of course. And again, we want t sub j comma n plus 1 isolated on the left-hand side. So we are going to divide this term here by this term here. Okay, so watch as I do that. We have 2 cosine of k delta x, and let's not forget our u's as well. So let's take a look at this. We can factor out the 2u in the expression for the numerator and the denominator. We can rearrange this expression in the numerator so that it matches this expression in the denominator. Now let's analyze our equation. U 
is equal to alpha, which is the thermal diffusivity, multiplied by the time step, delta t, divided by 2 times delta x squared. All of these terms that are incorporated in the variable u are positive. So u is always positive. What about these expressions, which are in the numerator and the denominator? What are those? Well, cosine of k delta x is less than 1 and also less than negative 1. Okay? So we don't really care about the negative side of things because this is being subtracted from 1. So if it's always less than 1 and it's being subtracted from 1, these terms are always positive as well. So let's rewrite this expression. Given that omega is always positive, because omega represents this expression in the numerator and the same expression here in the denominator, we know that this factor here is never going to be greater than 1. It could be equal to 1 if omega was equal to 0, but it can never be greater. So this temperature at the subsequent time step is not going to go to positive or negative infinity and it caused the solution to not be stable for our temperature profile. And again, this is for any value of u, which incorporates the thermal diffusivity, the time increment, and the position increment, okay? So this is incredible. We have shown through the von Neumann stability analysis that the Crank-Nicholson method which is an implicit differencing method, is completely stable for any value of u that you choose. So I hope you enjoyed all of the videos in this series. I thank you so much for watching this video, and I hope to see you next time. Omega is always positive because it represents this term that appears in the numerator and the denominator. And we see that we have the right relationship between these two temperatures at the same position because this factor that relates those two temperatures never exceeds 1. It can be equal to 1 if omega is equal to 0, but it will never exceed 1. Thus, we maintain stability each time we compute the subsequent temperature. So that means that for any value of thermal diffusivity, or the time increment you choose, or the position increment you choose, which those increments are important because they will affect your accuracy because you are using them to approximate the partial derivatives in the heat diffusion equation that models the situation we had with the bar. However, no matter what you do, your solution for the temperature profile will be stable. Okay, That doesn't mean it will be accurate, but it will be stable. So you won't run into any of the problems we encountered in the previous videos where we used the explicit differencing method. And when we increased our time step, above 0.5 seconds, it was absolute madness, right? So we don't want to see that, and that's what is so special about the Crank-Nicholson method. In this video, we demonstrated via the von Neumann stability analysis that for any value of u that you choose, the solution you obtain for that temperature profile will be stable. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you were able to watch all of these videos in the series, and I hope they were extremely helpful for you, and I hope to see you next time.